Hello folks, all out the one here. Welcome to another video. As you may have heard in my last post, I am running a competition and this is that competition. This is a competition for a three piece survival kit. Obviously I have three sets to give away. Each kit consists of 10 foot of Technora 200 cord a magnesium fire starter and a custom made Kiridashi style knife made by British knife maker Rutili. So obviously this will work as first, second and third prize. Whoever I select as first will get a choice of which knife. Second place will get a choice of the remaining two knives and obviously unfortunately no choice for last place but you still get a beautiful handmade tool. Let's just have a quick look at each of the knives. Really cool looking design. Nice chunky piece of recycled tool still there. And um, cord wrap to uh, give you some nice grip there. Obviously has the maker's stamp mark comes with its own, each one comes with its own custom made sheath ending in a neck, a matching coloured neck um, lanyard <clears throat> with safety breakaway pull tabs. Also, if you haven't seen one of these before, it's just a magnesium bar in a circular form with a Swedish style ferro rod attached to the side. So you scrape a small pile of shavings from the magnesium bar and then ignite them with the ferro rod. Really um, hot sparks up to 3000 degrees C. Makes it a lot easier to get a fire going in poor weather conditions. As for the Technora, it's a really tough um, hard wearing fibre so lots of uses for this. So I'm sure you're probably wondering by now what you have to do to get your hands on these juicy prizes and have a chance to win well this is it so basically the competition is a little virtual loadout which pieces of outdoor equipment would you pick for a one month solo winter bushcraft trip if money time and availability was not an issue meaning it can be as expensive as you like it can come from any period in time that you like please no lightsabers um, and you know availability with regards to it being custom made etc so basically no constraints stipulations you must be able to carry everything on foot this is a backpack expedition only no vehicles etc the temperature range i have in mind is temperate winter varying from minus 20 degrees c to approximately 10 degrees c so we're not talking arctic but we are talking pretty cold weather conditions hypothermia would definitely be an issue be as descriptive as possible as levels of detail is important um <clears throat> yeah the more descriptive the better obviously and going down the list here just uh, need to write as much or as little as you think is necessary for you to truly survive for a one month trip um, <clears throat> in these conditions. 
so you're going to need all of these tools, knife, you can choose axe saw or survival tool, it's up to you or any combination, shelter, cooking, carry system as in rucksack, how you're going to carry all your equipment, clothing, fire, food, navigation, water, first aid, entertainment and bonus item. You can download this form from the link beneath this video. Just uh, follow the instructions, go to the website, download it, just for your own reference. You don't need to uh, download it, it just um, makes things easier for you possibly. Just as an example, I've kind of done my own one here. So um, this is just what I think would be the minimal gear I need to be comfortable and safe for this proposed one month winter bushcraft trip. So let's just have a quick read through this. Knife, Falkniven F1, my favourite knife of all time, definitely will be my trusty companion in these circumstances. A wetting Scout Axe, I do actually own one of these already. Um, nice lightweight axe, perfect for wood splitting and wood prep. A Silky Boy Pocket Saw, I've um, heard many good things about these, haven't got one as yet, we'll get one at some point, um, but they're supposed to be the nuts, so to speak. Shelter, Vord Ultralight Mountain Tent, weighs in about 1200 to 1400 grams or something like this, a uh, really nice double layered tent, um, light enough to backpack with, no doubt. Um, a down Arctic sleeping bag. Um, any brand but uh, yeah definitely one that's rated down to at least minus 20 um, I choose down over synthetic because it uh, compresses more and is lighter um, obviously you have to take precautions to uh, keep it dry as it loses its insulative value when it gets damp and finally an inflatable sleeping mat um, self inflating ones perfect for me um, lots of comfort and insulation there. Cooking, um, I'd choose a titanium half litre pot with a lid and a long handle so I can cook in a fire without having to suspend it. Um, titanium spork just for durability and lightweight. A small roll of silver foil for cooking, very useful and uh, can make all sorts of containers using the silver foil. A custom made alcohol stove as I've always found the custom ones to be better than anything available commercially. That's just my um, opinion. Um, one litre of meths. I'd use this sparingly for emergencies only when uh, lighting a fire isn't appropriate. Uh, carry system. I'd choose a Kifaru 80 plus litre rucksack. Um, just because it's extremely lightweight and known to be extremely durable. Uh, there's always a lot of weight saving potential in your rucksack um, so I know this to be a light one and well made as I said um, 80 litre dry sack now this would be you know if it buckets down for any um, for any length of time or you know for river or water crossings of any type and also just generally to keep my down uh, stuff as dry as possible Obviously, lots of other uses for that too. Clothes, sealskin waterproof hat, merino wool cap. I like at least two hats during the winter, as you know, you could sweat one out, so you've got another dry backup, and um, just nice to have a cap sometimes, and sometimes not to have a peak. Sorry, I meant peak. Um, two wicking t shirts, you can alternate between them to wash them. Um, nice lightweight that doesn't retain body moisture um, so you know keeps you warmer basically heavy cotton combats um, I like these because you know they're flame retardant to a certain extent so um, if you're sleeping by a fire for example um, then they're preferable to um, synthetics um, <clears throat> if these do get wet then I've always got the lightweight insulated waterproof trouser which um, 
is always good, nice lightweight option and added bonus of being waterproof. Two pairs of pants, again alternate between them, wash one. Three pairs of socks, um, just because during a day of trekking you could get two pairs of socks wet easily and you don't want to be having wet feet in um, cold conditions. Also just bad for the condition of your feet. Mountain hardware, 500 fill goose down jacket. I do already own this. I think it's a great piece of kit and um, definitely compresses down to a good size and super warm, perfect for sleeping in. A light wool jumper, um, just as another alternative layer to wearing the goose down. You know, that's mostly for nighttime. Uh, whereas a lightweight wool jumper will be perfect over the wicking t-shirt during the daytime. Um, over that we'd have the Regatta Storm Jacket. Um, have good experience with these. Good brand, um, well made gear. Especially the higher end ones. Snug Pack Poncho. Also works to keep your rucksack dry during downpours. Uh, can also use it as um, <clears throat> another covering for your shelter area. Uh, Solomon trekking boots, nice lightweight trekking boot, um, supposedly well made. Uh, for fire lighting options, I'd have a turbo flame lighter, which I have already. Nice, um, reliable piece of kit in my experience. Um, standard military size ferro rod, a Bic lighter, just for backup. And then finally, a good amount of waterproof tinder, or tinder in a waterproof um, container of some type. With regards to food, they, you can't carry, well, you find it hard to carry, along with all the other kit, exactly enough food to keep you going sufficiently for a month. But I believe this will give you a good start and gives you the options of... Um, catching or foraging more food whilst out in the wild. Even in um, winter months there is uh, wild edibles to be had. So we've got a mini fishing kit, extensive wild edibles guide, wire for making traps etc, a hundred foot of Technora, lightweight alternative to 550 paracord, a pound of sugar, a pound of flour, pound of rice, 250 grams of salt. Salt's always important, um, difficult to come by in, um, in, in nature, unless you're by the sea perhaps, or you happen to come across a um, subterranean stash of salt. Um, 50 grams of pepper, just to uh, spice up any wild edibles foraged game um, that I might have, may have acquired. Um, same principle with the 50 grams of spice. Half litre of oil, again um, a useful product in the wild, many uses for that apart from culinary. 250 grams of cocoa, a nice um, calorie laden dried powder which is also a nice treat. Uh, some cured meat, I'd probably go for something in the form of a really dry salami just because it's hard wearing mechanically and um, you know lasts a long time especially in uh, winter conditions. Almonds and cashews a good alternative source of uh, protein but uh, equally can be used for um, trapping animals as bait. Some raisins lack of um, available vitamin C and uh, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, roughage, let's say. Uh, and they also store very well. So, um, yeah, definitely bring some of those. Mars bars, for, a, Mar a Mars bar for emergency use. Um, literally, have seen Mars bars put life back into cold, freezing people. Um, navigation, a map um, in a waterproof container of some type, um, familiarise myself with it before leaving, a basic Garmin GPS just as a backup with a few waypoints that you know you can navigate back to easily, 
should your base plate compass fail and then you've got a micro compass to um, just give you another backup reading on your bearing as far as water is concerned I'd go for a Catadyne pocket filter which I do have on those already it's nice and compact it does take a good bit of arm power to get a few liters through it but uh, certainly does the job well um, alongside that some chlorine tablets some vitamin C with the dual purpose of um, providing me with vitamin C in an environment where it's not easily um, available um, but also it neutralizes the taste of chlorine tablets and uh, makes it more palatable to drink and we'll also go for an item I already have a clean canteen 64 ounce bottle big beast of a water bottle um, you know so you can move further between stops and also I'd go for a half litre Aladdin Thermos again I have one of these um, good way to preserve fuel um, you can just get a boil on while your fire is going pour, pour any excess water into the thermos and then you've got a hot drink later on without having to fire up your cooker or get another fire going so that's a good labour saving device in my opinion next a Milbank bag good for filtering large amounts of water and also a good fail safe if the catadine pocket filter breaks in the first aid section I have some Cocodamol a strong painkiller um, stronger than just paracetamol um, if it's you know if I don't need anything as strong as Cocodamol then I probably can do without a painkiller altogether otherwise I can just take half of one and Bob's your uncle Surgical spirit or iodine, obviously cleaning up any wounds. Um, probably veer more towards surgical spirit as it doesn't stain um, and it's more of a multi use item. Hand sand, again, lack of water availability. Um, don't want to compromise on your hygiene, especially for prolonged periods of time. Some butterfly sutures, sealing up any cuts, tweezers removing ticks, removing um, thorns etc ready threaded sutures um, yeah just easier to uh, get going with them as opposed to uh, having to thread them yourself carry them separately etc some bandages a couple of different types um, some bowel medication anti-diarrhea tablets that kind of thing uh, some allergy meds being out in the wild you never know what could set you off I personally don't suffer from any, from any allergies in particular but again you could come in contact with some kind of sap or insect that triggers you off um, one course of general antibiotic probably not absolutely necessary for just a month stay you probably survive your uh, grievan grievance uh, until you get back to civilization but just a good fail safe again some more bandage and finally some surgical tape to hold bandages and dressings in place and next moving on to entertainment the complete work of Dickens always um, good to catch up on the classics and uh, if you don't feel like dwelling in the 19th century then a modern thriller pen and paper to take notes write down observations etc every trip out into the outdoors is a learning experience so um, always some vital knowledge to uh, write down finally two bonus items um, a head torch nice reliable head torch um, I actually used the uh, zebra brand zebra lights um, really solid I've had this one for about a good five years now been out on absolutely every single one of my outdoors trips during that time so probably coming up to, to the hundreds um, yeah never failed and a really compact little unit um, so yeah that would be one of my bonus items and the other one would be a mini survival kit in a pouch <clears throat> just a really small one with absolute vital backups which would always remain on my person um, if you see my recent video um, 
where I show off this uh, survival knife setup then this is the type of uh, micro survival kit I'm talking about if you want to see the full video um, it's the last video in fact just follow this link up here right um, I've estimated that the weight of this is approximately um, what was it now I think it was about 35 to 40 pounds so about 20 kilos which I think is an acceptable weight to walk with um, if you're out on an extended um, trip so um, one of the rules of the competition is that you have to be a subscriber to both of my channels that's Alpha Bushcraft and All Outdoor One <coughs> please use the links below this video to uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so um, equally if you'd like a copy of this to download um, then please follow the other link beneath the video again uh, just for your own reference um, now how I'm going to accept entries <clears throat> you can either post a video talking through the list uh, you can post a series of pictures or you can fill out this form and email it to me I'm not really bothered about which format you present this information in <coughs> but video <coughs> is always preferable excuse me I'm going to post up a copy of my loadout suggestions um, what I'd ideally like to carry and um, if you'd like a copy for your own reference it's also going to be available um, again follow the link beneath the video those of you wondering what um, these knives are exactly and um, these are known as um, kiridashis um, traditionally a Japanese design that utilizes the leftover high quality steel from making a samurai sword um, goes some way to explaining their shape but you know they, they, they're multi-use item definitely um, for example, you know, cutting cordage, um, shaving some wood, um, opening packaging, letters, etc. Also good for stuff like marking leather or cutting materials. Um, but I really just think they're kind of cool, unique kind of design. Now folks, I understand that you know my list was really extensive, um, yours doesn't have to be, but make sure there's at least one item in each category. Look forward to um, reading and viewing your submissions. Today is the 27th, so let's say four weeks until the competition closes, so that should be sufficient time for everyone to submit their entries. Again. I really appreciate all your help and support over the years. Um, all you subscribers, you know, it's genuinely appreciated. This is All Outdoor One, signing out for now. Thanks for watching. Take care.